merci beaucoup encore pour l'invitation. Uh, okay, so first, administrative things. It's been actually a month since I gave my lecture, so I will briefly remind what was happening. Also, I, I'm sorry, I apologize for confusion with March 7. Several people came and then they emailed me because on the website it was still listed, but I guess there are much more important things happening in Paris than my lectures. So I don't have any problems with that. And actually, I experienced firsthand on Thursday with my son in the evening, we, we were actually caught by tear gas in, in downtown. We were walking and the protesters were running. So I know there are important things. Okay, uh, so uh, that's why the decision was, instead of two lectures which we missed, to add like half hour to every lecture today and tomorrow. So I understand that this is a burden on you, but we'll see how it goes. I'll try, if necessary, we can make a break in between. That's how it was in Soviet Union, 245 periods, but in America it's usually 50 minutes plus questions. Anyways, uh, so let me remind you what I, I will, I, I'm talking about. So basically, previously, uh, we had here several series of lectures on physics of active matter by Jean-Francois and by Eric Lauga. And the idea was to complement these lectures by, by highlighting some mathematical aspects of which arise when one studies active matter. And particularly by mathematics, people mean various things, some simulations. So here it's mostly real analysis, like we used to do with pen, now we do it with computer or iPad, but that's, uh, and of course modeling is always part of, part of mathematics, designing good models amenable to analysis or amenable to good computations. All right, so uh, let me also remind you this very quickly, so what, what was happening. So I consider, I consider two case study examples examples, which was uh, motion of a cell, and it was keratocyte on a substrate, and second is uh, bacteria. Swimming in mucus, right? Uh, so those were two case study examples from physics, and the goal is to extract extract fundamental mass features, challenges, whatever you want to call it. So what we have done in my previous lecture, we looked into something which is called phase field models of a cell and the observation and the question was can we use can can one use variational techniques and specifically, I talked about heat flow or gradient flow, 
grad flow. And what we did, this was what I've done at the very beginning of, uh, of the study. We compared Allen Quan passive Allen Allen Kahn, Kahn, who is a physicist, material scientist, and this was a model of two phase media with moving interface. Alloy is moving interface according to mean curvature. Very interesting mean curvature. And then we consider the same Allen Kwan plus active terms. And my point was that at active terms. This is a model which describes motion of a cell on, on substrate. Active term describes protrusion and protrusion and, and contraction, myosin contraction. Okay? All right. And the bottom line here was that once we edit those active terms, the heat flow, the perfect heat flow structure, a variational principle, just disappeared. Again, I'm not claiming that, of course, that this is only exclusively for active matter. Of course, some. Other dissipative systems, they don't have variational principle for different reasons, but this is a very interesting feature and intrinsic feature of active matter, which deserves to be studied and addressed. And then the bottom line of this was the following, that while here for Alan Cohn and same as for Ginsburg Landau, I gave you the whole set of problems like that. There's a set of tools called calculus of variations. Tools. There's a whole subject of mathematics. Here, we have to rely, and I demonstrated you on some really, I mean, non-trivial asymptotics, asymptotic, not even uh, asymptotic ansatz, which is, which is not necessarily, and here it was not asymptotic, usually serious expansion. It was really guess of something with small terms, something which we know, something we don't know, and then justifying it. So it was, it's a tricky, and that's, that's, I think, where we stopped. It was a tricky asymptotic procedure which allowed, in this case, to do, uh, to analyze uh, at least shape, motion. Okay, so what is, what is phase field? Because I, I'm gonna contrast, the start of new would be to contrast phase field. Phase field is the following. For example, uh, here, this is the boundary, or maybe even like, suppose cell is on substrate from above. This is the boundary of the cell. And it's very difficult to numerically to track moving and deformable boundary. So instead, what we do, we introduce special phase field parameter, which is one here, zero here, and sharply drops, which is defined everywhere on the substrate. 
And then we solve differential equations, and then, then we reduce to a one-dimensional equation, which is called sharp interface limit. And this was interface is this, and it's epsilon leads. So that's, in a nutshell, what we have done. And I showed you that we reduce computational complexity. But then I said what, what I wanted, what I really wanted to study, is, uh, for example, stability of solutions, which is, I tried in this model, absolutely impossible. And in general, the philosophy is that phase field model are much better for uh, numerics, but for analysis, we need different models. Uh, <coughs> and let me now move on then to This is all you saw, variational approaches. This was this phase field model with active terms in red. OK, and uh, OK, and now this is where I'm going to start. If there is any questions about previous stuff, you can ask now. If not, then I'll move on as we have long road for today. So this is what I was saying, that phase field works really well for numeric and uh, numerical simulation of cell shape evolution, 2D, even 3D now there is very good model, but stability is too hard. So when I moved to free boundary, I first used Alex Mogilner's model which had in boundary condition the uh, surface tension combined with uh, velocities. And we decided, again, this was, we, we, we made some progress on stability, but then we decided to go, uh, in, in Mogilner's free boundary model, we rigorously proved bifurcation from stationary to travel in waves, but not stability. And bifurcation is also an issue here. And then bifurcation, it's when solutions of certain equations drastically change with certain parameters. Is there any reason why phase field, you cannot do stability analysis, or is it just technical? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's something. Uh, well, I think maybe deep reason is that phase field is not, phase field parameter is not physical. That's, I think, the underlying, it's, it's a, some kind of, you impose it. And, and for stability analysis, you work, that's a very good question, you work with, here our problem would have all physics, all measurable quantities, okay? Thank you, very good question. Yeah, I thought about this, yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, that's, that's where we are, and let me now, remind you what is free boundary. Of course, classical free boundary, which we study in undergraduate courses, in, in uh, PDEs, there is usually one example. It's when water mel melts in, in ice. So what are the features? How it's mathematically very different from standard classical problems for elliptic, whatever equations. Because now the domain, it's not only the function which solves PDE, but the domain is part of the solution, unknown domain, right? And that's usually, you will see how it would result uh, in, in uh, different kind of ex extra boundary conditions, right? That's, that's mathematical features. Uh, so in this, in simplest, uh, in, in all basically in classical free boundary problem like this one and more recent free boundaries which describe uh, tumor growth by Friedman and, and his group, uh, the PDs are usually linear. But still, that's important to understand that free boundary brings very strong nonlinearity in a problem, okay? 
And that's I would, when we will talk about bacteria, I will tell you the same, the evolution problem, when you let everyone swim, that's, that's a very strong additional uh, resource for nonlinearity. Okay, so to, to describe my model, let me start from how we can came about with this model. First, uh, we thought about a classical Hele show model. And we wrote something, and then we, we struggled, and then we found we have one dimensional paper, and then we put things together. And that's the story of developing this model. OK? Uh, so set up, you have a Stoxian fluid between two parallel flat plates separated by a very small gap. And it's a very old paper. It's actually 19th century. And Hele Show is one person. So when you do, uh, you either inject or you extract fluid. And injection, uh, then puddle with regular boundary and extraction, all this beauty. And it all has to do with different, uh, with difference in viscosity. Okay? That was discovered by uh, Hele Show, and uh, later, this problem was analyzed. I mean, this problem allows for beautiful, rigorous mathematical analysis, and in particular, stability was raised. And the reason for this is that uh, I'll show you. Okay, let me just show you equation. Uh, okay, this is just kind of separate slide on, on a review. So how we also, when we started to study this, I guess review is a good thing. We, we learned from paper by uh, Jacques Prost, Julicher, and Jean-Francois. Uh, and then there are several other papers. Uh, but this one we learned a lot. Uh, and uh, with, with uh, this one, with uh, Lev, uh, and with Carles, uh, and uh, Jaume. Uh, so our goal was to, to provide analysis which includes uh, shape, uh, change, and so on. So now uh, we were motivated by these uh, experiments which were introduced to me by Kinneret Karen. And uh, <coughs> this, something, this is experimental picture, and then I'll show you then some uh, theoretical picture, and we can compare. Now, uh, okay, where is this? Okay, so some of key mathematical challenges, I, I didn't describe your model yet, but some of key mathematical challenges uh, would be a surprising spectral analysis of linear operator, and namely, this is what we're going to discuss in details, not self-adjointness, in contrast with classical uh, quantum mechanics, unusual asymptotic ansatzes, and uh, stability, which should also include nonlinear stability. Now, this is supposed to be a movie from Barnhart, but probably I'm going to... I don't know if this is how cell moves. We'll see if movie works. Maybe it does. Late in the evening. OK, so it's basically a steady motion. OK, that's. Up. Mm. Oh. OK, so I just showed you cell which moves. You touch it, and it goes on and on, almost perpetually on this scale of biology. Uh, and the way to describe it, remember I'm talking about mathematical aspects, is to use so-called traveling waves in living systems. And uh, traveling waves are probably very familiar you from undergraduate courses 
from hyperbolic PDEs, wave equation, D'Alembert solution, something like that, and it moves. Okay, but the point is that when you study this linear courses in parabolic PDEs, you never see traveling waves. Parabolic linear PDEs, they don't exhibit this kind of solutions. So it's a drastic change with evolution, first, first time derivative. However, uh, the big breakthrough was, was done in 1937 by Fisher in America and Kolmogorov, Petrovsky, Piskunov. When they added this to standard heat equation, they added this biological, so to speak, nonlinearity, which comes from predator, predator prey. And uh, then they found travel and wave solutions. And in higher dimension, they were found by Pierre Louis, Beristiki, and others for flame propagation and our work about 2D uh, with free boundary. This was with fixed boundary. So the novel aspect from mathematical perspective is 2D and free boundary combined. And what we want with this solution describe persistent cell motion and breaking of symmetry via bifurcation. Okay, now I can describe the model. Mm. Maybe first, our model is generalization of uh, Hele show. So let me just briefly remind mathematics. This is pressure. This is velocity, Darcy law, uh, the basis of force balance, and uh, incompressibility. And the boundary conditions for pressure are either Dirichlet, when you observe viscous fingering, or Young Laplace and kappa is surface tension. Uh, kappa is curvature, actually. It should be coefficient here, but let's say it's one. OK, so we have one PDE here for pressure, and we have this boundary, uh, and together with, uh, with Darcy's law, it's incompressibility in Darcy law at the amount to uh, Laplace equation for P. So it's one PDE and one boundary condition. That's what we used to from PDE courses, right? But because of free boundary, there is one more Hellas show condition which describes evolution of boundary. Whatever velocity, normal velocity of, of uh, fluid, it's normal velocity of boundary, right? So, uh, so it's one PDE, but extra boundary condition. That's something to keep in mind. Now, uh, our model, we tried when we started, we, we wrote the same Darcy law, which I don't repeat here. And then we wrote constitutive equation, where M is density of myosin, K is contractility. This is usual hydrodynamic part. And this is like a constant, which is hydrostatic pressure of fluid at rest. So because of the dorsal dimension, that divergence is not, is not zero, which is a kind of standard assumption here. And when you again combine Darcy, this constitutive law with Darcy, you obtain equation. Instead of Laplacian, you obtain this. That's what we obtained at the beginning. And the drastic difference from mathematical perspective is that, again, we are studying free boundaries. So what was the idea of all this math community which worked for many, and physics community on theory of Hellas show? If you have unknown boundary evolutional domain, you just, on 2D, you just conformally map it into a disk. And luckily, Laplacian is conformal invariant. And then you can do things. But here, it's not. So your equation, you make changes, your equation will be broken. And then you, you either can do some tricky things, which is uh, some change of coordinates, or you can do other things. OK, so at first we wrote this, and then we wrote this young Laplace boundary conditions. But then we figure out that if you just have this, it was no PE at the beginning. Just pressure was gamma kappa. Uh, we uh, observed that the, the solution can shrink to a point. We, we consider we wrote some examples of that. Uh, just you can compute it analytically. 
So uh, in other words, model is unstable. And then uh, we came across uh, Lev Truskinovsky, one-dimensional paper where, where he introduced springs, elastic springs at the ends of one-dimensional cell and elastic springs, so it's non-locality. Because and, and we introduce something similar, which is elastic me membrane con uh, the cortex membrane elasticity penalizes this term penalizes for change of area from some reference area. Okay, and also Aronson phase field model it also had some penalization term. Uh, for changing the area. So having these two, uh, Aronson work in mind and uh, Igor Aronson and Lev Truskinovsky, we designed this term. And that was, uh, that was our suggestion here. Okay, now, uh, in my equation, it's not just equation for P, as Helles showed. There is also myosin construct, that's activity. Myosin inside. So myosin is described by uh, evolution of myosin density, and this term is special. It's called cross diffusion or Keller Siegel term in mathematics because it can cause all kind of mathematical troubles called blow up. And there is a whole science part of PDEs called chemotaxis, which is actually mathematics studying how solutions of equations with such term depending on initial on initial value of mass, they can either blow up or not. And depending on dimension, all this relation, there is maybe hundreds of papers on this term. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting feature. So this, and, uh, and on free boundary, we wrote not what Mogilner wrote, not what Sasha Mogilner wrote, but this Helesho term. And notice, if my equation in P, but my conditions on Helesho, they're in U, I can write my equation in U, but then uh, there is no way to write either in P or in U only. It involves, if I want to write it in P, that would be like that, and it would involve, uh, it would involve Dirichlet to Neumann ma map, knowing P, how to find normal derivative of P. So this is my full mathematical model, and uh, Okay, as I told you, the, the special features or challenges is that it's no longer conformal invariant, so I cannot use a simple trick of mapping into, into uh, a disk. Uh, and, and the other thing, I have to keep track of keller uh, Ziegel term. Uh, and so that's from mathematical perspective. Now, uh, what we do next now, let me just skip some technical steps. So we describe the whole system as M. M is density of myosin, and rho, rho describes the shape of the domain in polar coordinates. So or you can think of this as deviation from a circular shape. Okay, so those are my phase space, but there is also pressure, but pressure is not evolving. Pressure satisfies elliptic equation, time independent, so it would be auxiliary. So you have to solve for pressure, stationary equation, and then you consider everything as a dynamical system. Why do I want to do that? Because stability analysis you do uh, on this kind of, you can call it U, M, V, and would be one variable, and then operator, and operator is differentiation, this boundary condition here. And if you have any questions, I know people have different backgrounds, you can ask me. Okay, so what kind of solutions? Stationary solutions, experimental picture, mathematical picture, they are constant in space and time, and they have circular boundary. Uh, and then at onset of motion, that's, I just showed you that what happens. It's all of a sudden, and it's still mystery for me, I don't know, maybe someone can tell me why it's, uh, why it's a crescent shape, but that's what happened, it takes all of a sudden, it's break symmetry and, mm -hmm. sure? Yeah. I have a, a question on the mathematical structure of your equation. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, some, at some time I learned that there were parabolic and uh, hyperbolic mm -hmm. uh, equations. Right, right. Now, I would guess that your equation from the very beginning is parabolic. 
it's parabolic, but there is one variable. Yeah, okay, so let me uh, let me see. Maybe there's a certain number of boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. Must be the right mm -hmm. number. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Now for the traveling wave, th that will be a hyperbolic one, right? No. No, that's what I said. Uh, travel in waves, you can still find travel in waves. Uh, le let's go back. It's a very good question. I like it. So let me go back to when I said that even from when I talk about travel in waves, you see even this is, this is parabolic equation, mm -hmm. but still it was discovered. This travel in waves in hyperbolic in a second uh, uh, derivative utt is equal to uxx. They were known in 17. But this, if you, if you don't have nonlinear term, there is no travel in wave solution. But what I'm saying that if you add certain nonlinearity, you can have in parabolic travel in waves. And that's what happened here in much more complicated context. Okay? But probably there's a rescaling in time. Sometimes. Well, rescaling is a, is a different issue. But the point is here you have, it's, it's not that nonlinearity fundamentally changes the nature of solution. All right, so what you were referring to, it's a classical linear theory of PDEs. Hyperbolic, you have travel in wave. Uh, parabolic, you have concentration. That's an, an infinite speed of propagation. That's what you learn in PDE courses. So that would be a, a second part of my question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I actually, yeah, there are, there are theorems of solvability of a certain nonlinearity. So, in, in short, I, I, I prove it. I have to prove it, yes. And, but it is expected. It is expected, and I have extra boundary condition, as I said, because of free boundary. Yes. Okay, and, and we have part of, part of this result. There is a long mathematical paper which establishes existence of solutions. Okay, but that that would take us to a different universe. Okay, all right. Any other questions? Uh, okay, let me try then to move. Okay, so this is travel and wave solutions. Let me try to speed up. Uh, then what I do? I do linearization of this operator around about, for, about stationary and about traveling wave. With, and, and then we do linear stability. I will talk today mostly about linear stability analysis uh, of operator A of V and nonlinear in 2D at, at present. We don't know how to track it. And for 1D, that that's, could be done. Uh, but still, there are some questions which we recently discovered. So basically, uh, the difficulty is uh, multiple zero eigenvalues, because everyone knows stability analysis. When it's positive, it blows up, negative, stable. But what if it's zero? It's called slow manifold. And then I will talk about not self-adjointness. And in particularly uh, about uh, eigenvectors, which becomes almost parallel. and it's important because we construct solutions through these eigenvectors. So that's, that's a feature which is not observed in, uh, in self-adjoint. And also generalized eigenvectors. I can quickly remind what it is. So just in the simplest, simplest two by two matrix, when instead of a of f2 is equal to f1. So basically, a square of, of this vector is equal to 0. This is eigenvector, OK? Uh, generalized eigenvector of degree 2 of 0 eigenvalue. OK? And they describe, actually, uh, rotations. That's something which I have another slide which shows, if I have time, I can show why they describe rotation. I remember some iconic physicists were intrigued by that, why they would describe rotations. So we did the proof. OK, now uh, the key, the summary of the spectral analysis, something which wasn't clear to us, even first we published, a, not published, we wrote our own preprint, didn't publish, fortunately. 
but we notice that at v equals zero, that remember when stationary solution, the zero eigenvalue has multiplicity five with three eigenvectors and two generalized eigenvectors. So this three comes from translational and x and y, this is easy, but then change of velocity and generalize uh, rotations. Uh, but that's one is conservation of myosin. And v not equal to zero, then one of the zero eigenvalues, they become non-zero. And it's like emerges from this. And when cell starts to move. And the sign of this lambda OV uh, determines stability. And what we did analytically, we obtained, I think, main analytical result, explicit asymptotic formula for lambda OV. And whenever you have explicit asymptotic formula, you can ask, you can interrogate this formula and ask about physics. OK, so basically, let's see, uh, how much time do I have? This is a finite dimensional cartoon of what, what happens. That's a three by three matrix uh, of spectrum of my infinite dimension. My operator is, acts in space of function. It's infinite dimensional. But people like to think about matrices. So when v equals 0, you have eigenvector 0 of multiplicity 3. and when v is not zero, those are explicit eigenvectors. And what happened is that E3, okay, when v goes to zero, E1 and E3 becomes parallel. And this E3, it's, a, it's obtained as a Draw as a strange combination. There is some cancellation here. It looks like it's incorrect, but it is, it is correct if you take into account on cancellation. So E1 and N3 becomes, uh, they, they collapse two eigenvectors, two different uh, eigenvectors, they collapse into one, and that's, that's the effect of not self adjointness. Anyways, uh, so, so the, the math features, the, the point of what I'm going to talk next is, uh, that's what I, I talk, what, what are underlying physical uh, causes? And the suspects are non-locality, free boundary, activity, and could be something else, dissipation. Okay, so how, how do we, how do we, work on that. Let me show you something which is actually work in progress. So we came back in, in our model, we, uh, I'll, I'll give you the results, but in order to analyze not self jointness, we use 1D model of Lev, which I'm going to talk later on. Basically, this is the definition of self jointness and you, you compute uh, the difference. If the difference is zero, then it's self adjoint. Okay, but also, I, I want to briefly discuss, but I'm probably not going to get into this to, today, linear versus nonlinear stability. Okay, this is the example which I always give in my 200 level undergraduate course, that if you have linearized stability, uh, it's totally inconclusive. And that's what happened here, right? So, because linearized is zero, and one is blows up, and one is... Now, in finite dimensional, linearized stability is equivalent, but in infinite dimension, there are a number of points. And I know many people ask questions here. First of all, even if all real values, are, uh, real eigenvalues are well behaved, because there are infinitely many, the limit can be zero of real part, and then you cannot rule it out. And the other thing, what actually happened, and we discovered uh, in our work with Lev, we discovered classical papers from mathematics of not self adjoint uh, uh, operators. The span, uh, the eigenvectors may not span the whole domain, the whole space. Okay? That's, that's an interesting phenomenon which one has to deal with. Okay, so this is just warning and outline. Okay, so what we did. Okay, maybe I should, 
So what I'm, I'm, I'm finishing at, we start at 4.30, I'm finishing. 40 minutes. Okay, I have 40 minutes and then questions. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so I guess this is an important uh, slide. And then let me just tell you our main mathematical result. And there is a paper with like 60 pages or 70 pages. And there is one short phys, phys rev. Uh, that this KE, and let me remind you what KE is. I think let me just go back to the model because that way, okay, this is the model. KE, it's an effective, so you think that your cell's supposed to oppose change of volume or area. And it happens by introducing, by thinking of this as an effective elastic restoring force, which is uh, described membrane cortex elasticity. And the idea in 1D was introduced by uh, Lev Truskinovsky and his group when he put simply, at the, 1D is a segment and the boundary is a point and you put, you attach spring to each point, right? Okay, so this is KE, and, and the main result here is that okay, the main result here, there is some critical value of KE, which depends on physical parameter. One is surface tension, the other is adhesion. pH, you can forget about this. This is a non-important constant. And if K E is greater than the critical value, then we can prove asymptotic stability. So what is asymptotic stability? There is Lyapunov stability. When you can, at time t, you can approach solution. So u of t, uh, zero is asymptotically stable. For any t, or for any epsilon and, and t, uh, there exists delta such that if u of 0 less than delta, then you have this. You can ensure by making sufficiently close initially, you can ensure that at, time, at given time t, you're going to be sufficiently close. But asymptotic stability tells you that uh, it, it goes to u of t would go to, to, to zero. Here I assume that equilibrium as t goes to infinity. This is a stronger result. Okay? All right. All right. So, so, and also what's important here for us that this k, it's not like we prove existence like in many theorems. We have formula, transcendental equation, which you can solve, it's like Bessel or whatever. You can find solution, basically, with any precision you want. All right. Well, for nonlinear typical tools of nonlinear typical strategy, I'm not going to discuss it uh, because in 2D it's still an open question and even uh, but the, the, there are two strategies here. One is to use Lyapunov function, uh, and the other is to prove linear stability and to evaluate using semi-group theorems. And uh, then uh, estimate the difference between nonlinear and, and linear. So now, back to this lambda of v. Remember I told you that uh, the spectrum of my operator, we are now talking about linearized problem, is the following. Let me just remind you. So when, when cell is round and it's seed, it's multi zero multiplicity five, uh, and then when it's not zero, the one thing is emerges, lambda of v. And its sign determines stability. So this is the formula for lambda of v, which is asymptotic in small v. 
Now, E of M is maximal non-zero eigenvalue of linearization about steady states. This we can compute explicitly because steady states are around. Uh, so basically, we call it movability because if this is positive, uh, then resting cell wants to move. It's negative. It's resists the motion. And the other thing is because we have a family par uh, parameterized, not parameterized by velocities of travel and waves, the second derivative uh, determines uh, also uh, if m increases or decreases, that determines of, uh, the, the sign of lambda of v. And in this case, we proved bifurcation, the following bifurcation picture, that uh, this is m, this is total, m is total myosin mass, this is a critical myosin mass. It's called pitchfork bifurcation. Stable steady states become unstable steady states, but then the stable traveling waves grow. So it's like cell is sitting, and then it's gradually started to move. But that's, uh, I know Jacques Prost told me that both, both scenario occurs, but typically what I've heard that it's not this scenario, but mostly inverse pitchfork. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let, me, let me skip this slide for now and then just talk about because of time constraints. <clears throat> so the key ingredient of our model was this uh, constitutive equation which I can remind you again, let's go back to the model. Okay, I'm clicking a lot. Uh, this, this was constitutive equation. Pressure, and here hydrodynamic, and this is active pressure, and this is normalizing constant. This is active. This is from myosin contraction, right? Okay, and uh, now if I go back to where I stopped, What happens, this is a linear constitutive law, Km. Now, uh, if, if my adhesion is much greater than viscosity, then U flows in direction of gradient mu, gradient M, and then myosin flow, flows towards area of high concentration, and it's something which is called crowding effect. However, in what we also learn, and we learn it also from 1D paper uh, by Lev, that typically myosin saturates. And then one has to introduce some term which doesn't go to infinity when M goes to infinity like this. Uh, and uh, then what we did, we introduced in our, we added to our model this term. And then what we observe, uh, we observe that this supercritical uh, bifurcation become, became subcritical. So what is it? This is a stable solution, so round cell sits on substrate, and all of a sudden it jerks. This is, this is unstable. It has to jerk right here and start moving, all right? And there is actually interesting experimental data on that, which, since you're mostly physicists, let me show you. Okay? So... Let me explain. So it's histogram of cell speeds observing experiments. Few cells have actually low speed. And so cell it really jerks from rest to higher velocity. And uh, here it's uh, top is coherent cell, high speed and same shape, stable, and bottom is decoherent cell, low speed, and shape keep changing. This is unstable, and this is, so, so in other words, the theoretical predictions are actually in a very good agreement with experiment. All right. All right, so now, we're not going to make a, a, any break, right? I, I'm going to go straight. I'm probably going to go straight through, right? 
you're not going to make any breaks, probably, right? Okay. Okay, so let's see where we are as of now. We, we wrote, let me just summarize because it's been a long story. We wrote PD model, PD, Helia show, uh, Keller Ziegel model. Okay, then we wrote, we did uh, stability analysis, analysis, and the key thing we found key critical depending on, on adhesion and uh, surface tension, and which ensures asymptotic stability. And then, and then we, found, we found bifurcation from traveling, bifurcation from steady states to traveling waves, right? Okay, so this is the last slide which has to be con compared to a slide which, I don't know if I'm going to show it, uh, the experiment. This is, this is not numerical solution of our equation. This is just plotting asymptotic our analytical solution. So that's important to know, and they perfectly fit, uh, and this is concentration of myosin in the rear, they perfectly fit this picture which I showed you. So, I mean, perfect is maybe a strong word, but they do fit. Yeah, this, this experimental picture, that was our goal. So, that's how we believe that our model... Okay, okay. Now, let me focus on special features. And this is something which is work in progress. So let me try to tell you, I mentioned to you there is a like, physics lab where you don't study generic, uh, when you study specific bacteria. Also, there is abstract math theory of not self-adjoint operators, which I'm not talking about, which certainly is related to here. But how our math lab works in, in this particular problem, how do we analyzes mathematical features. So the rest I will try to just to, to focus on this uh, not self-adjointness. Okay, and for this, the first idea, something which I emphasized at my first lecture, if you want to do any analysis, you have to look for minimal models. And minimal models, you just focus on one and only one maybe two minimal number of parameters, but at least one, at least one experimental feature. You can do it in, in the lab, you cannot do it, you can do it in math lab, but you not necessarily can separate other things in actual lab. So for this, actually, our two-dimensional model is captures shape, evolution, it's, it's much more complicated technically, and it, but we, we started from 1D model when, when cell is, is, a, is a segment. A and D are two moving boundaries, and P is pressure. It's all non-dimensionalized, so this is non-locality is now the, the, uh, the, uh, the domain is unknown. This, and uh, in non-dimensionalized coordinates, uh, Z would be viscosity, P would be activity, contractility, and K would be this KE membrane elasticity. Three key physical parameters, right, which you can keep track of. Okay, what's next? So, remember my, my entire system was written as a dynamical system, okay? Maybe I should, again, I know, go back and tell you where we first introduce it. 
Okay. Yeah, here. So I wrote PDEs, and then I told you that my phase variable would be uh, my in density and rho, which is describes boundary, unknown boundary, right? And from that perspective, it is simple. That it's just a dynamical system in phase space, okay? So this dynamical system has nonlinear operator A, and what I'm writing now is it's linearization, and there are two linearization around stationary state. Let's start from linearization about stationary state. And as I said, this is work in progress. So I wrote this. You know, self-adjointness versus not self-adjointness. I remember when I first gave this talk in uh, experimental audience, people thought of matrix, of course. Symmetric matrix or non-symmetric matrix. But here, that, uh, that's why I wrote my operator in a sort of like a matrix form. But it's not really true matrix because this is differential operator which acts on function m, so it's infinite dimensional. But still, it's very, uh, and so m, a, and b, h2 is some space of functions. You don't have to worry which has second derivative. That's it. But then a and b are, are, are numbers. Uh, uh, like those are real valued functions, okay, because those are n. So this is my phase space, and this is where this, so to speak, matrix acts. Okay, and uh, now those are some notations. Uh, this is very recent. Gamma 2 is integral operator, and it captures how my density affects endpoints, so it's clearly non-local. And again, here, the three physical constants are z, p, and k. So my goal is to see how, this, how far this operator from what, is it self-adjoint? And if not, you have to look for the reasons. For underlying, you can compute it because it's a simple one-dimensional problem. And then you can see where these physical parameters show. Then you can see what is underlying physics behind this not self-adjointness. Remember, I told you mathematical feature of not self -adjoint. Spectrum is different. Again, function is different. Stability analysis would be very different, therefore. But what is underlying physics? That's, that's my goal, to be at that interface. All right. Uh, so let's talk about these entries. So the first entry comes from Keller-Ziegel part. And it, it, it applies to a function, m. m of x is a function. It's infinite dimensional. The blue entry is due to non-locality. It maps value of endpoints to functions. And the green entries, it's because of free boundary. It maps functions m to values of endpoints. A and b, my free boundary. Uh, and orange, this is non-locality. You, you can compute everything here because it's one-dimensional. So now you can see that this orange block is perfectly self-adjoined. So asymmetry on not self-adjointness comes from green and this blue block. This is also self-adjoint. It's not a matrix, but if you write this as an operator in, in Hilbert space, that would be a self-adjoint operator. So then you can pinpoint the, the, what I'm trying to say, that because of this one-dimensional model, you can compute everything, and you can pinpoint origin of this asymmetry. Okay? And that's pretty much what we did. And, uh, and what are the answers? So explicit form of entries of AS shows you physics. So there are, OK, let's go back. So we have to analyze this term and this term. And the answer is, oh, the answer is non-local boundary conditions for pressure P. That's they enter blue terms. So 
roughly speaking, intuitively, boundary conditions influence pressure solution, boundary condition on pre in, in, in influence solution inside the domain and therefore inside cell. Elasticity of membrane influences uh, pressure inside. Free boundary, kinematic boundary, this is second source, kinematic boundary condition. This is green terms. Pressure in the bulk determines velocity of the boundary. This is kinematic boundary condition. Those are and the third, actually, if you see that activity terms, uh, they enter, uh, they enter the, the green terms. So, uh, so therefore, activity is the third culprit. So, in other words, uh, let me see if I show this slide. Okay, somewhere. Oh, commutator. Let me also comment on commutator. Okay, so what is commutator? Just to remind, just in case, what is the definition of self? This is, if, if this difference is zero, then by definition your operator is self-adjoint, right? Because if you put here A star, that would be definition of A star, and if A star is equal to A, then it's self-adjoint. So what you do, you take the difference and you compute non-zero terms. And again, all this F1, you, you can do everything here, everything totally explicitly, and that's how we came to, uh, to the sources of nonlinearity. So the key here is to go to something which at first glance is not very realistic, one-dimensional cell, but it's, it's Preserve the key features. Okay. Um, all right. So, so we understand this not self adjointness now physically. And let me just finish this part and then start to tell you what I'm going to. The last part is about bacteria swimming and homogenization, something which a number of you asked me. Uh, so, but let me just summarize here mathematically. So, active matter system described by PDE, like this here, it's uh, parameterized by some parameter lambda. There it was uh, velocity of travel in waves or total mass in mass. Uh, but then there is some critical parameter when equilibrium solution, or stationary solutions become, this is for myosin contraction, lambda is velocity or total myosin math. Now, most recently, if I have time, I may talk, maybe even today, maybe I'll talk a little bit about a uh, model by uh, Carles Blanc, uh, Blanc, uh, Casa de, uh, Jaume Casademunt and Ricardo Allor, of tissues, of spreading tissue. It's the same class of models, uh, variational problem with free boundary. And uh, here we discovered that parameter would be, it's, if you have horizontal tissue, would be the, uh, the uh, length of the tissue, critical period. And in the swimmers, the parameter would be relative to uh, angle of swimmer uh, relative to. Uh, but what I'm trying to say by this slide, there is some kind of mathematical unifying framework which allows to treat all of these problems. Now, this is going to be my second, uh, my lecture for tomorrow, but maybe what, if I, I still have some time, uh, so maybe I'll, I'll show you a little bit about uh, the model of uh, tissue, spreading tissue. And then you will see that's, I still have time, I think. Okay. So,
It's a epithelial tissue which, which spreads over a substrates, uh, form monolayers of, of cells. And what I, what I, my goal here is to bring your attention to something which physicists usually don't pay that much attention, namely solvability of the problem. Uh, actually, maybe I will see, maybe I will use more mathematical slides. Uh, Okay, so the, the, the most interesting for us was formation of, of fingers, how to understand it, okay? And here is a model, which is not ours. It's polarization. Uh, P, uh, so now at, uh, this is P of X is local polarization, elongation of cells locally, and uh, absolute value, so vector, which which is this. Uh, then there is a stress, active stress due to polarization. This is active part, and this is a usual constitutive law. And then there is force balance, okay? Of course, this is kind of, it's not really free energy, it's effective free energy. I think we had this discussion. And on a boundary, we have this, the same uh, Helesho boundary condition. Okay, now the first question which we ask, and for that I probably have to do, I can show you some other slides, I'm sorry, I'm jumping. I wasn't sure how much I can do in this hour because I never do these talks. Okay, the first question when we formulate this problem would be just existence of solutions, local existence. For local existence, there is for some time solution exists. But that's not good enough for physics. For physics, we, we, we want to see, and this is still, there are some still unknown ingredients, that solution exists for any finite, for at least some given finite time. And let me show you what, what could happen. So this is the idea behind this theorem. Now I'm talking about something which normally we don't talk in. In principle, your domain, your solution, omega of t, it it's can start self-intersect, or it, it can develop cusps. It's called, in mathematics, it's called that solution is, loses its regularity. Now, what it could mean, you can say, okay, but tissue doesn't do that. But that means that one of the two, it's either real effect, or it means that your model stops working beyond certain times, all right? Which is good to know, which is good to know. So, uh, so this, Curvature singularity, we, we kind of at this point, we already uh, ruled out uh, the cusps and self-intersections are basically also ruled out. So we can prove, but under certain conditions, which I didn't specify here. <coughs> so it's not always your solution, but you understand the issue, right? <coughs> so when you write, when you have novel model and this model uh, is really very interesting in novel model variationally. You have to analyze, someone asked me about existence of solution in my model, we proved it. Here it's much harder. Okay. <clears throat> now, what next? Uh, <coughs> next, what we discovered uh, is that uh, we, started, we, we, we started looking into a finite, it's a half space strip first as a model, right? Of course, you have to, when two interfaces are far enough and they don't intersect, and that's, that would allow me to use some traveling wave techniques because then I can, I can see solution like that. <coughs> so the question, uh, okay. Okay, this is pretty mathematical. Uh, maybe I'll just show you bifurcation. 
So we assumed in this problem, we assumed that my solution horizontally periodic with some period pi. Of course, in reality, it's, it's just finite, but periodic boundary condition is pretty common. And then what we proved that there exists a critical period pi star at which the family of flat France solution bifurcates to a family of finger in France solution. And this pi star, again, it's a function of uh, physical constants, zeta and eta, uh, in the model. Uh, and uh, they solve, uh, that's also we found transcendental, transcendental equation for this pi star. And moreover, we found even a, a, a shape, asymptotic form near the, like everything in critical phenomenon, you can have nice scaling near critical, near criticality, and we found explicit asymptotic formulas for the fingers, and you can say which is big, which is not, and that's, that's what this analysis. I think this is not yet published, uh, and it's work with my student, same student, Alex Safstin, and same collaborator, Vladimir Rybalko, so hopefully it will be published soon. Um, anyways, uh, so now in the remaining five minutes, maybe I can tell you a little bit of what I'm planning to show uh, in my remaining lecture. Uh, okay. Okay. Collective motion of bacteria in mucus. That's again a case study problem, which is quite technically involved and complicated. However, remember what I'm trying, I'm trying to extract simple new mathematical ideas. And here, what my focus will be on using homogenization theory. Okay, this is a work uh, with my colleagues from Paris uh, Antoine Gloria and Mitya Dunrix. So homogenization theory, and I will also talk about that, also known uh, as coarse graining. or upscaling. So basically, I will try to demonstrate to you that this is, people are very familiar with simple averaging, with mean field, right? But mostly there's volumes of this, uh, which explain, and particularly most recent is Random homogenization, that's kind of techniques. How to deal with randomness. Okay, and Another keyword beyond mean field. You can think of mean field as a simple averaging, and sometimes it works. Of course, homo mathematical homogenization theory it has very colorful history. On the phys physics started back by Maxwell and Raleigh for conductivity. 
and then Einstein dilute, but it's always dilute limit, and they just wrote formulas. But then what happened in 70s and 80s of 20th century, much, much later, 100 years later, it's a systematic mathematical machinery was developed, which is called for both linear and nonlinear problems, this gamma convergence, which I talked about, which uh, allows to analyze in a, in a, it's a framework. So you, you have a problem, you apply this framework, and you see what happened, all right? And most recent advances, of course, this word is keyword, and you often deal with randomness, right, when you due to lack of information. It could be unprecise measurements, or you don't know all degrees of freedom. We had this very nice lunch conversation with colleagues today. But at the end, at the end is one way or another, randomness means that you don't know something exactly, and then you have to describe this probability, and that causes all kind of issues in analysis. So I'll try to, to stop on that. And if I have time, then after I'll discuss this and discuss homogenization theory, since I'm talking, I can talk also, we can have some results on individual bacteria in mucus, with zigar, they're not mathematical analytical results, but the interest in novel modeling and numerics, which supports experiments in our lab. Okay, so it's 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, so maybe, yeah, okay. <laughs>